live, abide with him day in, day out, like you say, with silent prayer, morning and night, you know, constantly making that connection, having that relationship first. Yeah. We have a good relationship and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you have a good relationship, why haven't you spoken to your father about it? It's been really great, but I'm kind of hung up on a couple things. Um, okay. So I was raised Christian, but... I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Yeah, yeah. It didn't get me anywhere. Right. But, see here. Paul, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Jesse. Hey, Paul. I appreciate, I appreciate you keeping that message simple day after day for people. Yes. Because it really, it really is simple. Yeah. Um, I thought about calling you yesterday when I heard a young man who was having trouble uh, with a woman that he thought he loved that had run off on him. Oh, yeah. And Been through that he before. made the comment that if, if he doesn't overcome now, he's going to, he's, going to be destined to repeat this process over and over again. Yep. And um, I can just tell you that it's true. Um, I'm 60 years old, but married three times, and it was the same process each time, trying to, because I hadn't forgiven my mother, hadn't dealt with any of those issues, constantly trying to find a woman to take that place. And until I forgave my mother and returned to my father, uh, just like you say, uh, my life was locked into that pattern. And ever, ever since then, it's been amazing. Amazing. And you're so right, man. I, when you, as you were speaking, I reflected. I remember when I used to date a lot, especially when I moved out here to L.A. And when I broke up with a woman, it was so painful. It felt like I was losing my soul. And so I got to the point where I had, in order to break up with one, I have to have another waiting in the wing there. And but and I would think, oh, this woman going to be better than that one. And every one I got with, it, it turned out to be the same thing. But I didn't know that I was in a cage in my imagination. And I was just repeating the same thing over and over because I was living in that cage of anger and in the thoughts. And, and the devil just makes you think you're getting something different and better. And it's always the same. It always turned out to be the same. And sometimes even worse. Yeah, I, I tried to have that relationship with that, with that woman in front of my relationship with God. Yeah. And it's upside down. Yeah. You've got you've to have that relationship with God. Live, abide with him day in and day out, like you say, with silent prayer, morning and night, you know, constantly making that connection, having that relationship first. Yep. And then all the other things just fall into play. It really, really, really will. When you overcome that anger and stay present with the Father instead of the loss of your imagination, past or future, things will work out. It's so amazing. They automatically work out. There's nothing you need to do. It happens on its own. I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you, man. No, thank you. Every day you're putting that message out. I know some people might listen and they might think, uh, you know, the message sounds too simple. It can't be that easy. Uh, it's got to be more academic. It has to be more spiritually puffed up. But it really is that simple. And when you, when you listen to Jesus speak, he keeps it simple, too. Yeah. And th there's a reason why God made the first commandment that you are to love God. With all your heart. Above all so, things. So they might, with all your heart, so they might, along with nothing else, you got to love and him first. every one of those other commandments, can you can keep those other things yeah. if you've got the first thing first. Absolutely, man. So I appreciate it, Jesse. Thank you, man. That's amazing. Appreciate your call. Have a great day. You too. If you want life to stop being so hard for you, God even said his ways are easy. His burdens are light. These heavy ways you have, hard ways you're having, heavy burdens you're carrying, 
They're of the devil. They're of your father, the devil. And it's okay, you're atheist. You're better off. It's easier for atheists to return to the father, know God, than for a Christian. Because a Christian think they already know God, and they don't. It's just a thought. It's an idea. It's a thought about God, but they don't know him. Uh, at least an atheist know that he doesn't know him. And the atheist has it a little easier because they're not thinking they already have it. But the Christians think they already know God because they know the Bible. They know the Word. In the beginning, there was the Word. The Word was God. God was the Word. They go to church and they hoop and holler. And they think they know God, and they don't. To think that you know God or believe in God is not it. Knowing him is not about thinking that I know him. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. There's nothing to think about when you return to the Father. If you're thinking you made it, if you're thinking this is it, then you don't have it. Those are thoughts from your dad and the devil. And then when you overreact to life, when you get upset, you just make up excuses. Yet, from your father the devil. Your daddy the devil. Three, Linda, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, Linda. I have a question um, in regards to forgiving your mother. Yes. And I was trying to, well, I was telling my sister about it, and um, and she said uh, she could help it. And I was kind of, I didn't know how to respond to that because it's true. She didn't, she didn't treat us badly because um, she couldn't help it. She was treated like that. You know, she had right. four other kids that she loved, and, and she treated my sister and I horribly, horribly. And it wasn't until I was older that I asked her why she even adopted us, and she said, because your dad made me sign the adoption papers. So, I mean, I can't, I, I, so it's not because she couldn't help it. Um. And your question for me is what? What do I, well, I'm wondering what do I tell my sister? Um, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you and your sister were adopted. Uh, was uh, your daddy married to her or something? For for a little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. They got divorced. So you and your sister was adopted, and she had other children by your father? A couple with him and a couple with another guy. And why do you think she loved them but didn't love you? I, I don't know. She didn't love them either. She doesn't love them. Okay. Because well, you can't, certainly... if you don't love all, you love none. So she doesn't love them. She doesn't have love. She never loved them. And, and she, that's, the reason, that's the reason she did you guys the way she did because she didn't have love. And uh, and because you came from, you know, because you came from a different woman, uh, she jealous of that and didn't like whatever, whatever it was. Right. She hates your father. She could not help herself. If she had love, she would have treated all of you the same with perfect love. Yeah. She didn't have it. She just she couldn't help herself. I promise you she could not help herself. It's a hatred for your father or your mother or her mother and, and somebody else herself that was driving her. It was not her. So when I do go to forgive her, I just tell her that um, I'm sorry for resenting you, for screwing up my life? Yes. I realize now that you couldn't help yourself, and that's why you did it, and I'm sorry for— And she couldn't help herself because she didn't have any love. Right. Okay. She hate her mother. She hate the cat, the dog, anybody that looked like her husband, whatever, right? She didn't have it. She could not give you what she did not have. Okay. And and you said that because her, your father made her sign it. She's mad about that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That That makes a lot of sense. Have you ever done things in your life that you 
couldn't help you wish you had not done it and you repeated it over and over again can't believe you keep doing it and you couldn't help it it's like something else was driving you yeah it's the same spirit that's the same spirit that's in her yeah okay and maybe the same spirit that just made us be like i don't know bad people in her eyes or something to treat us bad yeah because she 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 doesn't have a clear mind and she was seeing you out of the darkness of her imagination, which is of the devil. All right. And people that don't have love, they only have hate. And hate is of their father and the devil. They have a buck and load of excuses of why they do it, but they don't have it. They cannot see. Okay. And, and again, Linda, don't expect, and tell your sister, don't expect her to apologize, admit it. You don't need her to do it. If she does it, fine. That's for her. But you don't need anything for her. You forgive her by apologizing for resenting her. Don't ask for forgiveness. Apologize for resenting her, and God will forgive you, and it'll be amazing. Then you stop yeah. doing the thing that you don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm 51 years old, and I do have fear with her because, you know, just, I mean, just weird how even at 51 years old i'm still kind of afraid to talk to her and stuff because she was just so strict and so mean and so you know and it's like yeah, yeah. Jeepers. <laughs> but i will <laughs> every yeah. human being that has anger has fear because fear is this child of anger it's the devil's nature it's one of his little demons fear does not come from god god does not give out fear god is not of fear Anyone, and everyone does, who has anger has fear. Okay. And when yeah. you face her with no expectation from her, then uh, then the fear will disappear when you forgive her and God will forgive you. When you ask your father growing up, you ask, ask him, why didn't he protect you from her? What did he say? Oh, I haven't talked to him about it. Why not? I mean, we have a good relationship and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you have a good relationship, why haven't you spoken to your father about it? Well, we have a good relationship. He's just kind of hard to, uh, I guess not too hard. We're not, he um, doesn't open up much. If you have a good relationship, why doesn't he open up and why haven't you spoken to him about that? Guess I was thinking I had to battle the toughest one first. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I, I highly recommend do what you want. Of course, you have an honest talk with your father about. It. Let him know how she treated you and your sister. He probably already know anyway. But you ask, yeah. ask, ask him why didn't he protect you guys from her? Okay. If he is a good guy, you love him. There is no fear in talking to him about those things. Yeah, I, I feel like I could talk to him more. I, and I know he tried to at a point because he knew that um, my mom was going over, you know, being, <laughs> moving in with a child molester, and, you know, and he certainly was. And I remember Dad telling us, if he ever does anything, you let me know, you know. So, he, I mean, I know he tried a, a little bit, but. Have you forgiven yeah. your, this is your real mother you're talking about? No, no, this is the one that adopted me. Oh, and where's your real mother? Um, she's she's um, about an hour's drive. Have you forgiven her for letting you down? No. So you're just an unforgiving woman. What the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how, how are you going to ever have a life in an unforgiving state of being? Yeah, and well, I know that I'm I, I can't, and I already know it. I'm I'm getting anger that's just out of nowhere, and it's, yeah. I and I'm listening to you and stuff, and it's, I mean, it's it's getting really bad. It's going to get worse if you don't forgive. Okay. You haven't seen bad yet. Wait until you see worse. Okay. It, it's going to cause that's the nature of the devil, and what will happen when you go and apologize for resenting your mother, and your and and whatever then God will change your heart, then he will change your nature. We need a new nature, and that nature is in God once you forgive your mother, because right now your nature is of the devil. We need a brand new nature. 
Hang on, I need to get it quick because my daughter's picking up on my anger and she's just yep. flying off. Yeah. <laughs> you are doing to your daughter what was done to you and you can't help it. And she's going to hate you for it. And then she end up doing to her son and daughter if she should have one, her boyfriend or husband. She's going to do the same thing. Evil repeats itself until somebody say, no more. I'm letting it go. Yeah, I feel like I see that. And then your daughter going to hate you the same way you hate this woman, your adopted mother. It's going to be the same evil spirit generation after generation. Yeah. That's what happened to All the right. blacks. It's not about racism or any of that. Jim Crow is about the hatred of the mother and the yearning for the father. It ain't got nothing to do with anything else but that. All right. Well, thank you very much. Are you doing the silent prayer? No. And you know about it? Yeah, I know about it. I've, well, I've got... suffer. <laughs> <laughs> and <not. Yeah. laughs> Go yeah. do the silent prayer and start working on your life. You got to work on it. Yeah. And apologize to you. How many children do you have? Um, I've got a total of six, but I only have one. Where are the rest? Um, adopted out. Same thing happened to them, huh? Yeah. See how it repeated itself? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and the only reason to repeat it because you resent, you become like what you resent. You take on that identity. Apologize to your daughter that's left for imposing your anger on her. Let her know you're sorry. You can help it, and and forgive so that you can change, and she will forgive you, and she'll be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What's making Thank you cry you. right now? Huh? What's making you cry right now? Um, just knowing that I'm, um, with my anger, she's watching it and stuff, and I I just, I don't want that for her. How old is she? Fourteen. Wow. And where's her father? Uh, he's not in the picture. What a mess! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see how that cycle repeats itself? Yeah. Generation after generation after generation. Listen, stop crying. Go and yeah. forgive. And forgiveness, which is the spirit of God, will change things for you. You can't change it. It's spiritual. He will change it when you admit you're wrong for hating. Okay. All right? Yep. And do the silent prayer. I will try that. Are you, <clears throat> are you doing the hoop and holler prayer stuff? No. You don't pray at all? Not really. Nice. <laughs> Sit down and be still, and the Holy Spirit will intercede for you. He'll pray for you. Okay. All right? All right. Let me know how Thank it goes, you. Linda. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye now. Amazing. Andy, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How you doing? All is well, sir. How are you? Oh, all is well here, too. Hey, um, I need to thank you. You've been helping me climb out of my pit a little bit and um it's just been really great i've been listening to you for maybe three months and uh it's been really great but i'm kind of hung up on a couple things um okay so i was raised christian but i'm sorry uh, to hear that yeah yeah it didn't get me anywhere right but um yeah so i i learned uh you know in my 20s I figured out that Christianity wasn't helping me overcome my issues. So I just kind of left it behind. And it was only when I started listening to you that I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to this. Um, but so what I'm wondering is like, I can't say that I'm a Christian. Um, but like, do I have to say that I'm a Christian? Like if I'm being present and like, and observing my thoughts why do you, Does it matter why you what can't I claim say it? to be? Why can't you say it? I think just because I I have so much associated with it oh, that okay. like you know images in my head and things that it's supposed to mean right that I think I have a hard time like being like I, I don't really know what Christianity is I guess but I know that when I'm observing my thoughts that there's something to that that I've never got from 
traditional Christianity. So does this make sense? It does. It makes a whole bunch of sense. Why do you believe, okay. why do you think you need to say I'm a Christian? Um, well, I don't, I don't think I need to say oh, that. Okay. I think when I hear you ask people, are you a Christian? Then I, then I, I turn it on myself and I'm like, man, am I? Like, cause if this is what Christianity is, then I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't, I just, I guess I don't know if I need to actually claim that. No, you don't. The only reason I ask, okay. for the most part, when I, I, I ask people, are they a Christian? I want to, I want I want them to think. Well, if I'm a Christian, why do I have hatred in my heart? Why am I angry? Because if you're truly a Christian, mean born again of the Father, you're not going to have one iota of anger in your heart at all. And a lot of Christians who are atheists who say that they're Christian, but they're atheists, they don't have love, so they're just. This name, as you just said, is an idea about God. It's an idea about Christianity, but it's not true Christianity. So don't worry about it. You don't have to say it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so you, what do you realize from all that? Well, I I never thought that I would ever have anything to do with my dad again for as long as you know I live. But now that I realize that if that's the way to get good with God— that I need to forgive my dad, then, then it's just opening up all the stuff that I don't know. Um, I'm not quite sure what I need to do because, like, when I hear you talk about this, forgiving your father and stuff, like, I hear you say that all fathers love their children, but I don't, I don't have that experience from my dad at all. Growing up, I have an experience that he just absolutely does not like me, does not want anything to do with me. Like, I felt rejected by him. Um, and so I don't know what I need to forgive my mom for. Cause like, I'm just confused. Cause it's usually, you know, you say the mom turns you away from your father, but I don't, I don't know if there's something I'm missing that I don't know. You know, I'm guess I'm just confused about my dad and like how I, um, should go about it. Cause how, he doesn't how want old, anything to do with me. How old are you now? I'm 36. And was he in the home while you were growing up? Yeah. He was there the whole time. Like until I was 18. And I moved out, but he wasn't like there emotionally or, you know, he was just there. And when you ask but, him why, as an adult, you ask him, why wasn't he there for you? What did he say? I haven't actually asked him why he wasn't there for me. Uh, there's been a couple of times. Go ahead. No, go ahead. There's been a couple, been a couple of times where I've asked him, I, I've tried to bring up a couple of things from the past, but he just immediately kind of snaps and starts telling me all the things he's disappointed with in me. Like he won't, the couple times I've tried to talk about stuff, he just, he doesn't um, go there. He just uh, starts telling me what I've done wrong that he doesn't approve of. Can you, so, uh, if it's not too personal, because uh, he shouldn't put your personal business out there, what, can you give me yeah. an example or something that he's disappointed, he would say that I'm disappointed with you about? Um... Kind of just like really shallow things, like that I that I left church, you know that <laughs> I don't go to church anymore. That's a bad look. Uh, he like he was always he just always made fun of me as a kid. Like he was kind of my bully, but he never let me know he was kidding or anything like that. Right. Like he'll just he'll just bring up things that don't matter. Like like he's like, are you really wearing that hairstyle? Like because I used to give myself like a little afro in high school. Like yeah, it was dumb, but I you know it, it wasn't anything that he should make fun of me for and right. like be genuinely embarrassed about. Yeah. Um, but it's just very small stuff like that. So, were you, so were you closest to your mother uh, growing up? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's I was closer to my mom. and Yeah. That's why he resent you, because you're taking on your mother's identity, and you were seeing him through your mother's eyes, and he didn't know how to deal with that. Yeah, like you've kind of helped me piece that together, and I find that really interesting and also really weird, like that I identified as my mom yeah. or with my mom. Yeah. Um, but I think that, yeah, I think that is maybe why he resented or, or resented having me maybe because he saw my mom in me. 100%. Because I, I recognized when I was little, and I didn't re realize this as an adult until I started listening to you, but I, uh, my mom was always depressed, and my mom was very shy and timid, and I was those things as well. And I, 
and I didn't like that. I was like, why does my mom have to be depressed and scared all the time? Because that's how I am for some reason. And I, yeah. I recognized that I was like that, but I didn't know why or how. So You become like what you hate, and you, as a kid, you resented her for being that way, and you became like her. And likewise, you start to, as I said, treat and see your father the way that she does, and your father cannot deal with your mother, so he didn't know how to deal with the spirit of the woman that was in you as well. Just like he can't deal with his mother and father. He, it's the same thing over and over again. And that's why you must, and your mother is not shy at all. That She's evil, and she's playing a role to cover up the evil that's in her. Yeah. So if I were to, like, try and talk to my dad and try and forgive him, like, should I just forgive him? Because I can see that he couldn't help the way he was. I, yeah. I can't imagine he would purposely treat me the way he did. Like, because I know there's, you know, like you say, there's things that I, I can't help, the things that I can't help. Like, you know, so I can see that. So I feel like I could forgive him in that way. But then there's also this part of me that, almost want some kind of understanding of why he was like that, but I don't know if that's something I can get from him. So is that something that I should leave alone and I don't need the understanding you of why are, he was like that? Once you forgive him by, by getting to know yourself and see that you can help yourself and understand the same spirit as in you is in both of them. They cannot help themselves, right? Their parents did it to them. And once you go and apologize for resenting them, don't ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you. Don't have any expectation from them at all, meaning don't expect them to say, I'm sorry or not, or they'll blame you. I need to be forgiving you. Let them say whatever they need to say. You just apologize for resenting them. And then if the opportunity is there to say, ask your father what happened or whatever you want to know, it will come, but even if you don't get that opportunity to ask him, the fact that you forgive him because you see you is not right to judge, understanding about all things will be made, made clear to you. You don't have to have him t to give you understanding. He doesn't have it, but you will start to understand him because you will see what's going on with you. Okay. It's, okay, it's, so I just need to do it before I get understanding. Understanding is not necessary. Right. right, that's right. Okay. Because understanding, you already get an understanding right now, and the understanding which comes from God only is that you see that I need to get over this anger. You know, I, I, I'm starting to realize my father can help himself. I'm starting to see that I'm just like my mother because I identify with her quietness and whatever it was she was doing and you became like her, that is understanding that's coming from God. And once you forgive, okay. he's going to draw you in the kingdom within. And all that is, everything else will start to become clear to you as well. It will be okay. made clear. One thing at a time will lead to another, but it'll be the whole thing. It'll be amazing. Okay. That, that makes sense. I think, I, yeah, I think I'm ready to do it then. Um, but one other thing about the forgiveness, do I need to tell him... Like what my my experience of him, like why I'm forgiving him, or can I just for, forgive him? You, don't plan. Sense? Don't plan what all you're gonna say. The whole okay. idea is to realize you're wrong for resenting him, and you're just going to say, "I'm sorry for resenting you. I am wrong." And if more conversation come from that, it's fine. And if it doesn't, you'll be fine. Okay. Don't 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 think ahead like that because that is Satan trying to keep you in the uh, in an illusion of a past or a future which doesn't exist. You want to stay present, and whatever needs to happen will happen naturally. Right. Don't okay. let the Satan tell you. Oh, you need to ask him this. You need to say that. You need not to say this. Or you need wait and see. Your primary reason, as I just said, and I'm repeating it. You just realize I'm wrong for resenting him. He couldn't help it. And then go, right. and, I'm sorry, Father, for resenting you. And Mother, I know now you can help yourself. Okay. All right, that's helpful. Thank you. And if he says silly stuff, like whatever he says, that's on him. And he can't help it. 
It has nothing to do with you now. You just don't resent him for it. He just can't see. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm ready to do it then. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your help. And sh- are you going to shake in your boots? But it'll be the last time you ever have to shake. Yeah, yeah I hope so. That that would be amazing. And so. And forgive your mother, too. Okay. All right. I will. Are you doing the silent prayer? Um, uh, no. So I was going to ask you something about that too. So I've watched a couple of your silent prayer videos and, um, I think that's what I'm doing throughout my day. Like, I'm just like, while I'm at work, I just watch, like I take big chunks of time to just watch what my mind is doing. Nice. Not identify with it. Is that, yeah. am I doing it? That's right. Okay. You want to okay. watch, you want to just live your life and watch. You are the observer. You're not the creator. You can't change things it's because it's all spiritual, but you do want to observe. Watch those thoughts. Keep your, your mind where your body is. And uh, I, I recommend you, you do it to one, of course, but I recommend at night, you know, you take time and just relax. Look around you. Let, relax there for a minute. Watch those thoughts. And the first thing in the morning. And then during the day, just do what you're doing right now. Just kind of watching. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I, can I ask you a question about um, dating or my girlfriend? Yes. Uh, I I told her, and you know, once I started watching you, I was like, okay, we can't we can't have sex um, right now. Like, I need to figure out what's going on with me. Nice, um, nice. And but I found out that it's extremely hard to to do, and I, I noticed that um, like the thoughts and stuff. I was getting really distant from them. I wasn't identifying with them and I, I had a lot of I was really calm inside for a good couple weeks but then we slipped up and I, I ended up sleeping with her and then the next couple weeks it were so hard to not like the, the thoughts were just so hectic and chaotic and I'm wondering is that is that a like some kind of consequence of what I'm doing or is that in my head like because I guess I'm worried that, like, oh, man, if I keep messing up, it's going to get worse and worse and harder and harder. But I don't know if I'm making that up. Uh, you're not making it up, but the devil in your mind making it up, and it sounds like you making it up. You're listening to thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. So let those thoughts pass, and then and then never, ever, 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 but never say again what you will or will not do. You should not have said to her, we're not going to have sex again because you, you're playing God when you said it. And the devil like, okay, yeah. we'll see how that goes, right? And then when you do do it, you end up judging yourself. Now you got to fight with the spirit right. again. So don't say it. Just don't do it. And it, if you okay. end up doing it, don't plan to do it. Try not to do it. But if you end up doing it, just be aware of it. Don't get all into it and, and go unconscious. It's like right. it's like when Christ had the Last Supper, he said, when you eat, eat and drink to remember and not to forget. So if you do do it, try not to do it. But if you do do it, be aware of what you're doing. Don't go unconscious. And that alone would change that. It would, it would give you strength over that, and you'll be in control of it. Don't worry about it, but don't judge yourself. Okay. And don't ever, okay. say, don't ever say to yourself or her, I'm not doing it. All you're doing is setting yourself up to get deeper into it. Right. That makes sense. Because you're, okay. you're not in control of anything. Either evil is controlling you until you overcome it, and then good, which is of God, will control you. Okay. So don't all judge right, yourself sense. and just know all those overwhelming thoughts you're getting about it now. Just relax and yeah. let them go. It's not from you. It's not your, they are not your thoughts at all. Okay. That sounds great. Um, all right. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate that so much. Absolutely. Let me know how it goes. I wish you well. Okay. Thank you. I will. All right, bro. Okay. Okay. Bye now.